Hello, and welcome again to another program of Searching for Answers. Would you gather your Bibles together? And I'll tell you where we've been studying from 2 Corinthians in the New Testament, chapter 5. And we're going back and forth, but you can catch up to us. 2 Corinthians in the New Testament, chapter 5. And on my right is... John Jones, La Sierra University. Ivan Blazin, Loma Linda University. Bernard Taylor, Loma Linda University Church. And of course, I'm Carolyn Thompson, and we're very happy that you joined with us. Now, I'm going to ask my good friend down here at the end, Bernard, to tell us where we're going to start reading, and then read a few verses, please. I think it would be good if we picked up with chapter 5 and verse 14 of 2 Corinthians. All right. One of my favorite verses, For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. Mm. And he died for all, so that those who live might li live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. It's a beautiful verse. What about those who never heard the name of Jesus and they're dead? What chance do they have in the judgment? He died for all, it says, Carolyn. Even those who haven't heard, that means. So maybe they haven't heard the message, but they have a living Christ who is interested in their salvation. I haven't heard the name, but they heard the Spirit. That's right. And, and they lived in the accord with it. Yes. 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 And, and so can you imagine when we get to heaven, there will be... Somebody that says, who's that man over there? What's his name? <laughs> well, I've thought about that. His name is Jesus. Yes. Have you thought of that? That's Make up classes. And that's, yeah. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's, that's right. They don't even know his name, but they've lived up. But they were drawn to him. That's right. And in fact, from what I've read, that they discern something in nature that gives them the idea that there's an all-important being. They don't know who it is. But they are drawn. And, and prophets and kings, Ellen White says that, uh, as you say, they're drawn. They, uh, they have uh, felt the, the spirit, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that prompting has led them to, to live up to what they know now. That's right. That. So they don't know everything, but they know something that's important. But more important than that, it's who God knows, not just whom we know. You know what I mean? God knows people. He enters into relationship with them. The word know means to enter into a relationship. With yeah, but what about if they've never heard the name of Jesus? They don't have a clue how they're supposed to live. No, they mean, well, but listen. See, there's been a lot of people who have died who are relatives of ours. Huh? Goes way back. What chance do they, do you ever think about this? What chance do they have? Jesus is their chance. They've See, never I, heard his name. I know, but he's still the risen Jesus who died for all. He died for all, it says, mm -hmm. not just for some, not just for those who, who hear his name, but for everyone, in, including those who, d who haven't heard his name. So then we don't need to worry about Uncle Paul or Aunt Jane never heard the name of Jesus. Fine people, but what chance do they have in heaven? Well... That's you just told me. Yeah. You just told me. Yeah. That's right. So what do you say? Amen. Okay. <laughs> we, uh, we answered that question. Now let's go on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is verse 15 again directed to his readers? Mm. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, mm. Mm. but for him who died and was raised for mm. them. Mm. Yes. Yeah. There, there is, as you've said, there was this spirit of bragging and boasting and we are better than everybody and with resurrections already taken place in us and the concentration is upon themselves and he says turn your focus elsewhere turn your eyes upon jesus yes yes yeah. well you know um it's interesting verse 14 is uh, is on a trip uh, verse 14 is shooting toward verse 15 mm -hmm. which helps us to understand why Jesus died. You know, you, you can say, why did he die? That question is raised lots of times by people. But here's one of the great answers. Well, he died for all, 
And that means all without exception, okay? Mm -hmm. He died for all so that those who live as a result of his death, okay, might live no longer for themselves but for him who, who died and rose for them. So the concentration of the life is totally different. It's not upon self. It's not upon your own personal gifts or your own sense of your own spirituality or your greatness or anything. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. But what about those who have early on lived? What chance do they have in the judgment? Well, look at all the Old Testament people. They lived before the time of Christ, right? Wouldn't we say they had a chance? Yeah, but they, they had a chance because they learned about Jesus. But there's lots of people who have died whose relatives later became converted to believe in God. And what about a son or a daughter or an aunt or an uncle? Never heard a thing about it. What chance do they have? Let me tell you, um, just today we finished reading in my Greek class a portion from Epictetus. Who? Epictetus, who okay. was a Greek philosopher, born at the time of Paul, A.D. 50, died A.D. 130. And he has a section called Of Providence. He was a philosopher. And here is somebody, he calls himself an old lame man, but he expresses his appreciation for God. Mm -hmm. Seems like he may well have been a monotheist, but he is awed by mm -hmm. what he sees God has done in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and he talks about the, the divinity of Christ, uh, of, of, this, of his God, and all that he's provided. And he's filled with admiration and praise and he just wants to sing all the time. And he says to you people, where do you think this came from? And we need to be praising God. And you say that, that it all just happened and it doesn't matter. But somebody needs to do it. And I'm going to do it for you. I invite you to join me. But he has just filled with admiration and appreciation. I think this is what Paul had in Romans 1 when he says that people can learn of the divinity of Christ, theotes, not theotes, which says that by looking around and appreciating it and recognizing that someone had to do this and somebody who loved us, he talks about being able to sleep and breathe. He talks about the stomach and, and, and all of the wonderful things that happen. And he says, if I was a swan, I'd do the things of the swan. If I was a cuckoo, uh, I would sing the songs. But I am an old lame man. <laughs> I will hymn the divine. Isn't that something? It's a beautiful passage. <coughs> it is, really is. is. I want to use that in a sermon because that is beautiful. Totally. You, you Even know, though he never knew Jesus' never name. Never knew Jesus. But somehow the Spirit... Exactly. And he responded to that spirit. Yes. He didn't need to know the name, yeah. but there was that response from within him that says there's got to be more. There's got to be more. Well, and you know that I referred you to a statement in Ellen White, Patriarchs and Prophets and Kings, where she says, they're talking about heathen, people who don't know God. They show by their works, these are the people who haven't heard, that the Holy Spirit has touched their lives. She says, they will never be lost. Yeah. Oh, that's, what that's it beautiful. Says. That's what it says. I love that. And that's what Paul is saying here. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So take hope, everyone. There may be some who talk negatively in our ear and try to tell us, you're never going to make it. Look what you just did. Why, how could you do that? Jesus will turn his face from you. You're never going to make it. And we've got to tell people you are going to make it. He's been down here. He knows what we're going through. As long as we are on a first name basis with Jesus Christ, <laughs> we're going to make it. We've got to make it. Well, I knew a person once who was saying to me um, that she knew an atheist <coughs> who was the most loving man that she had ever met in her entire life. And she showed, you know, in her conversation what kind of a person he was. But she says, 
he, do, he doesn't believe in God. Therefore, he's going to be lost. Mm -mm. And I think we need to take a broader look. How do we know why a person, for example, may say he doesn't believe? I teach a course, <coughs> God and Human Suffering. The greatest cause of unbelief is the terrible tragedies and sufferings that people go through. They don't understand how that fits in with, with God. And they have emotional and intellectual struggles with this idea. I can't believe that because their faith, you might say, is very poor or maybe non-existent, they can't make it if they show what God is all about in their lives. Hmm. You know, Paul himself never makes a systematic attempt to do the whole theological trip mm. on this issue, mm. but he is aware of it. He's mm. thinking about it. Mm. Probably the place where he comes closest is in Romans chapter 2, and this is familiar material. Our viewers will recognize it as well. <clears throat> I won't read it all, but in verse 14, he says, Gentiles, these are people who may very well know nothing about Christ and next to nothing about God. When they who don't possess the law instinctively do what the law requires, even though they don't have it, they are a law to themselves, they show that what the law requires is written on their hearts. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. It is. <clears throat> and their own conscience bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts excuse them or accuse them, one or the other. So they have know, a sense of right, right and wrong. The inner debate that we all go through. Mm -hmm. On the day when, according to my gospel, God through Jesus Christ will judge the secret thoughts of all. Mm -hmm. In other words, here is God in a way balancing the intentionality. Yes. It, uh, be just before that, Paul says, we've all sinned. We've all come short. Every one of us. That's not the determining factor. Rather, it has to do with our alignment with the best we know. Has, Isn't that interesting? It has so to do be. Ourselves. Yeah. It has to be. The, uh, that's a good phrase, the alignment with the best we know. Because we don't know all the same things. There's all kinds no. of people in the world today sure. who, who do not know anything about Jesus Christ or about the gospel. Yeah, absolutely. So therefore, those that have gone before us who never had a chance to learn about God, God has a way of reaching them yes. by intellectual <coughs> by seeing, planting a little seed in the ground and see it grow? I mean, how can you yeah. have a garden and not realize that there is somebody in control? And yeah. so I tell myself that God will work it out. I don't need to worry about it. I think that's the right answer. That that's Paul's answer. Finally, he does not solve the problem he raises, mm. but he kind of throws up his hands and says, God knows how to assess people's conscience and their integrity with that. Mm -hmm. And that's, it's enough. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we have to remember, too, that, you know, we have this phrase that epitomizes salvation for us, justification by mm. faith. We mm. say we're mm. justified mm. or put right with God mm. by faith. Mm. Not by our knowledge, but by our faith. Now, some people have a trust in something higher than themselves, which is not articulated as trust in Jesus, but there's some sense of something above and beyond them. Sure. And, and that has to count with God. What kind of God of love would he be if that didn't count? But it, it does count. Well, what do you think the thousand years is for? Mm. <clears throat> We're going to grow up. That's my thought. I don't know. It's going to take you a thousand years to grow up? No, but <laughs> no. I, you know what I'm saying. It There's made a, me. <laughs> it, it, may, it may take me that long. <clears throat> It'll take us all that long. We're going to really grow up. <laughs> That's good. Well, I, I just want to say that don't be discouraged because God is doing everything he can to get us to heaven. And the enemy of us all is constantly whispering in our ear, you're never going to make it. Look at the thoughts you have. Look what you haven't done. You should have done this and this and this. You're never going to make it. And I've just got to quit listening to that voice mm. and listen to the good voice that says, Carolyn, mm. you've got a chance. Hang in there. <laughs> well, <laughs> Not just a chance. <laughs> That's right. This isn't a lottery. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. Yes. Because 
I don't think... We're seated together in heavenly places by faith already. We're there. Ephesians 2. <laughs> Is that true? That. Oh, in Ephesians 2. Well, it says let's that. read that. I don't know that We verse. are seated oh. together in heavenly places. Turn to Ephesians 2. That's I a don't great know verse. if I can find uh, Ephesians. We're studying certain Galatians, Second Ephesians, Corinthians and by <laughs> doing 1 John and Ephesians. And that's all right. We're answering oh, some that's important right. questions. That's right. Okay. Okay. Ephesians what? Chapter 2. And verse, okay, <coughs> then reading from verse four. Read yes. Yes, to right. Ephesians two, verse four. Okay. It's just said we are terrible sinners in many ways. But now, because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. See that. In other words, even when we've done a lot of bad things, yes. dead in transgression, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. There Can is. you believe that? Well, that's it. That's incredible. Yes. We don't deserve it. God, who is rich in mercy. Yes. God who is rich in mercy <laughs> out of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead through our trespasses made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us we're not standing there we're seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And then a second time, verse That eight. is absolutely beautiful. Where is that again? <laughs> Here's Tell Ephesians. Our people. Ephesians chapter 2, reading from verse 4. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2, right after Galatians. Yes. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse for armor, for armor. Would and you read it for me, please? The, I think, uh, Bernard, you were reading from the New Revised Standard, is uh -huh. that right? Yeah, and so mine is the same. Yes, yeah. mine is the same. <clears throat> well, read it again. God, let's pick out the words. Okay. God, rich in mercy, great love. And it's not enough to just have the verb, the love with which he loved us. <laughs> the yeah. verb and loved the us. cognate yeah. accusative there. Yes. Um, even, even despite our trespasses, the word alive made us alive. The word grace, the word saved, verse 5. <laughs> verse 6, raised us, seated us, so that in ages come he might show the riches of his grace and kindness. Those are the key words. And yes. then, then as, if, yeah. as if to, uh, uh, he's not trying to be redundant, but he repeats it again, verse 8. Yeah. He goes in again. Notice yeah. that, and he adds a little nuance. For Go by on. grace you have been saved through faith, faith. and this is not, not your own yourselves. doing. It is the gift, gift of, of God, God, not result of works, so that no one can may boast. boast. Except in him, of course. For we are God's workmanship. His workmanship, yeah. Yes. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. But notice the good works follow the salvation. Right. They are the result, the outflow, not the means of salvation. Right. That's right. And here is such a rich <coughs> picture of God. Mm -hmm. God rich in mercy. And he loved us with an everlasting love even while we were dead in trespassing. Yes. Yeah. Didn't stop him. This whole plan went into operation. Right. And we're invited to join it. That's beautiful. And to be part of it. And we're seated together. I hope you people will talk <laughs> about that next time you preach a sermon. Can you work it in? Sure. It's easy to work this in. <laughs> this is the gospel. Yeah, I know. But there's people who feel they're never going to make it. Yeah. There are people like that. But when, when they feel that way, Carolyn, they're looking at themselves and not at Christ and what he's done. I don't think so. Well, don't you think they're looking at their faults? I and think they weaknesses? are so discouraged Why? by the life they've lived well, that they it. feel they don't have a chance. That's what I'm saying. And that's where Jesus shines the most yes. when he turns somebody around. Yes, yes. By grace you have been saved through faith. Not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And there is no notion, you see, of 
somehow Jesus is trying to win the favor of God on our behalf to be an intermediary with an, an angry God. It's just not that yeah. way. God so loved that he gave, mm -hmm. rich in mercy. Mm. He sent his son. Mm. This is a rescue mission to get us to heaven, not a device to keep us out. Exactly. See, that's what you got to keep telling people. God is not trying to keep you out of heaven. That is Satan. Carolyn, what? you're already seated together with Christ in heaven. That's I never right. looked at it like that. I had this woman, and I think I've told you about her some years ago, but she was in her 90s. And she was one of those spiritual people who was like a spiritual godparent to me, mm -hmm. you know. And so I would talk to her about Jesus all the time. She never had any security of her salvation, so I would talk to her about Jesus. And one day she said, Ivan, I believe that. I believe what you say. When you're with me, I feel this. <laughs> but as soon as you leave, <laughs> I begin to wonder again, you know. That's because she looks at herself. We've got to look to Christ, right? That's it. How do you put it? Amen. What do you talk, how do you talk to people who feel that they are not going to make it because they've been led a horrible life? We've all led a, horror, led a horrible life. Everyone who is in the kingdom will have led a horrible life. That's do you think that when we get to heaven, here's this little group from the earth. Do you think we will go from star to star or other beings and tell the story of our salvation? I sure hope so. That's yeah. what I think. What do you Even think? the angels can't do that. Even the angels. Yeah. See, that's right. Yeah. I read that somewhere. Yeah. Even the angels can't do well, that. Well, doesn't it say in There's Peter? There's a beautiful hymn about that. That the angels desire to look into mm. these things, yes. things that we know about and they haven't realized. And at the transfiguration in Matthew 17, it wasn't angels that were sent. It was humans, yes. Moses and Elijah, because they had a vested interest. They were there on a promise, and, and um, they, they were human. and They had a testimony. And they had a testimony, yeah. <laughs> the law and the prophets. <laughs> well, that certainly was a nice little... Uh, <laughs> we sort of got off the track, but... But we're on the track, It's a we? very important track, I say, yeah. The love of Christ urges us on. That's where we, what we went That's with. That's what we were <laughs> dealing with, right. Okay, has anybody got a verse that is encouraging to others who say, Oh, no, I've, I've gone too far. I can never be saved. All right, verse 21 of this very chapter. We'll uh, come to that, but we might as well repeat it yeah, right now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, for our sake... God made him, Christ, to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Mm. He takes our sin and gives us his righteousness. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It's like putting on a new coat, discarding the old coat because it's worn out, put on a new coat, and God takes the old coat, and yeah. we have a new life. Does that mean we're going to be perfect? Um, from yes, God's when this mortal puts on immortality, we'll be perfect. Yeah. We're perfect in Christ. We can say that. And then that moves on toward finality when Christ comes. Yeah. What do you say? Amen. Do you, do you recall that quotation from Ellen White? I always have loved this quote, page 25. Um, if you don't mind me repeating it, Christ was treated as we deserve, mm -hmm. that we might be treated as he deserves. He was condemned for our sins in which he had no share, mm -hmm. that we might be justified by his righteousness in which we had no share. He suffered the death which was ours, that we might have the life which was his. Beautiful. Page Beautiful. 25 is in Desire Page 25. Of Ages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I had to memorize that when I was in school. Yeah, me too, in high school. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And it is a beautiful... Yes. It, it says it all. Yes. It does. <clears throat> well, we've got two minutes left, 
And where are we? We've Verse skipped 16. around all over. Second Corinthians five sixteen. <coughs> Second Corinthians five sixteen. You want to read that, Bernard? I'll be glad to. Uh, in sixteen. Uh, I thought you were. I thought you were I looking at me. For I, I if, was. if you would like Brother Bernard <laughs> no, to do this, I, I would be happy for it. Go ahead. <laughs> now, sixteen, we may need to come back to in a later conversation. Okay. We we do, I think there's sure. a lot there, we, and we, we can't will. do. But I'll, I'll read it now. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, or in the Greek, according to the flesh. Yeah. Fleshly viewpoint. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know Him no longer that way. But then, moving right on. Uh, Verse 17, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Look, everything's become new. Hmm? Hmm. All this is from God, verse 18. God who reconciled us to himself through Christ, here God is the active agent, not Christ. Isn't that mm -hmm. interesting? Mm -hmm. Has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. You ask, what about people who have led a horrible life? Here's the answer. Not counting their trespasses yeah. against them. Entrusting the message of reconciliation to yeah. us. So we're ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us. And so we entreat you. We entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. In other words, let God do this. For our sake, he made him to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amazing. May I cap that off of this? It says, be reconciled to the God who has reconciled you. It's like Where is that verse? I'm trying to find it. Well, it's... Uh, um, six, it's Second Corinthians verses. six, or what? It, where is it? Second Corinthians five. Okay. That's it. 